Chances are, if you're listening to this podcast, you know exactly how powerful a podcast can be, whether it's for entertainment, personal growth, commute time, or your daily, uh, maybe weekly workout in the gym. Podcasts are the medium that millions of people use to get the content that they're looking for. And the question I get most often is, how do you create your podcast? If you haven't heard about Anchor, I'll tell you because a good friend told me. First of all, it's free. We always like to lead with the good stuff. The platform has all the tools you need to record and edit your podcast all from your phone, tablet, or laptop. Anchor then goes to work for you by distributing your podcast episodes for you so it's able to be heard on all the top platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. Best of all, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's a one-stop shop to create your podcast and get your voice heard and your story told. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Representing East Oakland, man. Welcome back. Welcome back. Another episode of the Hawk Vision Podcast. Guys, I could not be any more excited uh, for this episode. You know what it is, wherever you're listening, however you're listening. I know you could be anywhere in the world as the saying goes, but you're here to rock with us and we just want to help everybody shorten the learning curve. The guest that I have today, this is this is a two for one, ladies and gentlemen. It's pro- it may be the first time this has happened on the podcast, but when we talk about vision, power, worth ec- work ethic and belief, um, and you guys know I love love, we got a couple on right now that defines what a power couple looks like in real life, not on TV. And, and not just because of the successful marriage, but because in real life, they're building an empire uh, with a living resume of success. We're talking about ownership, guys. Five wing stop. Four fat burger restaurants. We're talking franchises. They are co authors of a top selling book, Faith, Family, and Franchise. You've seen them in Black Enterprise Magazine and so much more. Award winning entrepreneurs. And legend has it, they actually still even like each other. Deanna and Clint Lewis, welcome to the show. <laughs> I love your intro. I We're gonna take it. you I on the road. It. I with love us. it. You know? Yes, yes, yes. You know, this is my girlfriend for real. That's right. I Bonnie love it. Man, yeah, I am a yeah. fan of edification so and you guys you guys have, have earned it all, man. I just becoming aware of your story is is amazing for me. And thank you for, for having us. You know, it's it's an honor to, to be here to be able to talk to you. Um I know we're COVID style, but hey, it's still right. great to to know that we can talk about and handle some business and, and get our houses in order and all that good stuff, even during a pandemic, right? Because it's never too late. That's never right. too late. What a better time to reflect when you have time, you know, of, uh, of uh, self, you know, reflection inside your house. You know, most people are, are you know, computing uh commuting you know less to work you know tele telecommute so yes. you have time to to think about how i can get better and how i can win so that's what we want to try to shorten that learning curve give you some tips for success and see you at the mountaintop that's that's right i, I love like that. it i love it it reminds me of my my old mentor uh holton bugs used to say i'll either i'll either see you at the top or from the top the choice is on you yeah i know see, yeah. i know holton yeah. what you know about that organo go oh I man listen that. Northern California was on my back. Ramon, Ramacio, Edwin Haynes is big brother to me. Um, uh, I, I was with them actually b- two companies before Organo Gold. So when they came over, um, I was like the part of the first eight to launch with them. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. There so you go. There you go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a old school, you know, uh, A. Williams uh, guy started me out in the financial service business. So wow. I kind of seen everything that come across my desk yes. at one point in time. So I'm, I'm all for MLMs because that's the, uh, the way to make, oh man, you know, just incredible amounts of money without, <laughs> without the cost. Yeah, we have to do the right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that one too and and i agree i tell everybody even if mlm doesn't work for you go to the big meetings go to the calls because that's where you get introduced yeah. to the thought process of success and yeah. the, the different books yeah. that you can read um and it can truly change your life the, the first two companies may not even work for you um they work for me but the first two may not even work <laughs> for for you yeah. but right. but that personal growth never stops yeah 
Absolutely. I'm, I'm well, I know you heartily. always talked about the training that you got yeah. from just being in, you know, in just MLMs. Being in, it's, just it's, being in the room, being in the audience, and said teaches you to think, like you said, your attitude determines your altitude, and you can really start getting that quote unquote millionaire mindset. Yes. Because really, that's where it starts. It starts between your ears, and you can't even envision things if you're not able to kind of see the dream in the room. In the yeah. room, right. and you can touch it and 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 walk it, you know. And and I still am in touch with a lot of guys from a lot of different circles yep. that are on you know great great levels of success, and just seeing them go, hearing what they have to say, and their outlook on it with uh, the positivity and the optimism of an entrepreneur is just un unparalleled and absolutely uh, if you, agree. If you keep thinking like that you know soon it will happen for you absolutely success is a it's a compound event so i want to start with this question because of course we want to know everything we only got a certain amount of time i want to respect you guys' uh, calendar which i know is filled up with greatness um, but i'll start with this when you guys met and and during all the success subsequently who was the visionary and who's the detail person? <laughs> well, you always talk so pleasantly about me, so you go ahead and tell that. <laughs> uh, well, as I said, I'm a serial entrepreneur. So a little yeah. bit of okay. background, you know, as I said, I started out in the, the entrepreneurial world, you know, from the beginning. So I've never had an actual guaranteed paycheck. It was always, even when I was working for a company, it was 100% commission. So it was feast or famine. Yes. So I was the one that always looked for, you know, opportunities uh, to take it to the next level. You know, my wife, she was a, you know, get a good education, get a good job with benefits, good government job. <laughs> That's right. You know, your job, you know, on the 1st and the 15th or the 15th and 30th, that was your paycheck. And you can count it like you can set the time, right? You know, yes. so when it came to the thing, we kind of blended together in a, in a way where is, hey, I taught her how to go ahead and to think differently as far as let's go get it, you know, dream big, live, live the dream. And uh, uh, she was able to do the research and say, hey, honey, what about this? What about this? So she put all those things on my plate and, you know, I would go ahead and say, OK, well, these are things that we need to go ahead and check the boxes. So go and research it and detail it. And she's done that to the fact that she's even counted cars and parking lots to see if wow. certain <laughs> concepts were, uh, were good or not good. So wow. when you look at it, as the details and everything like that is a combined effort, you know, just to, to condense the time frames. But, you know, we we lived and we dreamed together. That's so right. I can't say that it was any one of us, but just the blend of us together, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in some of the things that we talk about in the book, that, that was what made our success because yes. we wanted to go ahead and get in the car together and we wanted to drive it to the destination, you know, of success. I love it. I love it. And the reason that I asked that question, uh, and maybe Deanna, you can chime in as well. But the reason that I asked that question is because most most married couples, uh, one person is the one that wants to gamble all the time. And there's, you know, like like Clint said, there's somebody that wants to make sure that we have a baseline of security. Was there ever a time where you guys remembered having to put all your all your cards on the table and say, listen, this if this one doesn't work, we have to think of something else. Or what was that process of of envisioning success and working towards it like for you guys? Oh yeah, so so for us, it's it's always been. And we've had some valley lows, you know. We we've had to. I like the way you put that. That. <laughs> that means broke you for know, everybody else. Some valley low, you know, <laughs> and we had to sit and say, okay, we got to let go of some things. You know, it was a point in time where we had a lot of um, piece of real estate property. So what brought us into the whole idea of opening a franchise was that Clint's business, as far as real estate and insurance, was booming. Okay. It was doing really well. And we've never been, um, should I say, silly about our money, right? Yes. We always wanted to be good stewards of our money. So we didn't want it. So we had money coming in. You know, of course, I had the guaranteed county job. And then Clint was doing very well in insurance and investments and, and in real estate. So we started, you know, accounts started stacking up. And I'm like, yeah, we need to do something with this money. We don't we don't need to. We have nice cars. We're comfortable with that. We already had a nice home. We were comfortable in that. And we had already bought a couple of pieces, additional real estate property, um, income property. 
But we was like, let's look to something that may be a little bit more longevity. Yeah. Um, and may look towards retirement as far as a business that we could do together. Because at that point, we were both working separate jobs, but we were still living together, right? Meaning living the dream together. We were still in it together. Let's see what we could come up with together. Right. And we started looking into franchising because I don't have a chef background. He is not a <laughs> chef, right? <laughs> we needed we needed <laughs> business in the box concept, right? So yeah. we, we looked at a lot of them. Um, and Clint is more of a risk taker than me he has really coached me into becoming more of a risk taker now but then you need to ask him how long it took me for, to turn in my letter of resignations to la county because i was like no 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 I'm not <laughs> you're not leaving the no benefits behind no. i love it i yeah, love you it you know i was like no so there's been times when when i've said okay wait hold on babe i don't feel comfortable with that what, what does that look like? What does that entail? How much of it do we have to give? How much of our time? We literally have those kind of conversations about every decision that we make, you know, even right. with where our kids are going to go to school, where they're going to go to college. We've always just made a commitment to each other that we're going to talk about everything because any move that either one of us make is going to affect us all. Right. So we all need to be at the table talking about it because I don't want to be surprised. You yeah, know, yeah. Um, and and I I was like, okay, you get the numbers together because he's Mr. Papers. They call him Mr. Papers. <laughs> That's his name. Okay. He's the numbers guy. So I'm like, you get all our finances together, and I'm gonna go out here and look at these different concepts. Um, and I checked on everything: Jamba Juice, Wingstop, um, Subway, Subway, Quiznos. I'm talking everyone. Um, did I say McDonald's already? Yeah, we, we take McDonald's. Um, Chick Fil A, which um. Mm, have mercy, Chick Fil A is at the top of the chain, but yes, yes, <laughs> but, you know, and, and and even being closed one day, they at the top, like they not playing at the top, yeah. right? So we looked at all those concepts and said, what what is the most simplistic, okay. had a simple menu that we could do if someone taught us, right? Mm. And that's how we landed on you know on the wing stop but back to your original question yes we talk about it all you know we we know what it's like to sit in um bankruptcy court together uh, we talk about that in the book you know because people see that they see the outcome but they don't know what the journey was like you right. know right. and and that was a hard thing i kind of felt like i was in criminal court <laughs> <laughs> I was like, they gonna take me to jail jesus you listen know? Be, being being broke is so expensive that I don't know if people like I love to have conversations like this where uh, people that speak success fluently can share um, and you catch on automatically. Right. Because you said you felt like it was being a criminal court, but that's how it feels when someone is attacking your money. It feels like yeah. they're attacking your money, your livelihood, your decisions. Right. Your character, it's absolutely. All of it. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Yeah. I love it. So what does the process look like? Um, for the foundation of a franchise, because we hear about it all the time, right? A million dollars in seven years for McDonald's, 250 grand for a subway. Um, when you looked at the business in a box and you and you decided on Wingstop and then later on uh, Fat Burger, what was it about the two? And what did you have to come to the table with foundationally to be part of uh, this greatness and this, this million dollar franchises that you guys have? You know, the first thing was, you know, in choosing or picking the concept, we were customers of Wingstop, mm -hmm. you know, first. So we love the product as well as Fat Burger. Yes. You know, so that was kind of the litmus test that got us to the table with even looking up, you know, Wingstop. Because Wingstop was the original, you know, concept that we started about 15 years ago. Okay. Uh, we just added Fat Burger about three years ago. So when we looked at it, we were customers. Then we went onto the website and said, okay. What would it take to actually purchase one of these? Because we love the product, you know? Right. So with that, we said, okay, uh, you need a, a $100,000 liquid. You need a net worth of this. You need, you know, $500,000 to do it. I was like, okay, not there, not there, not there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you know? So I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and take the next, you know, eight to nine months and we're going to go ahead and start checking those boxes and, and put it together, put ourselves in position to get a loan, you know, put us, put our credit in, put a little bit of money in the bank. So that way we had some, you know, collateral and we had some capital. So now when we went back to them, yes. you know, we were able to tell them, 
yeah, we're ready to, to do it. What, what, what territories did you got? You know, because we, we're coming to the table now already qualified, but we did the research almost about a nine month period of time nice. to actually make the contact, you know, of getting it. And we kind of talk about that in the book of the five C's that you need for any investor or IE bank to look at you, to invest with you, right? You know, you need to go ahead and, and, and put your credit in together. You need to get your capital. You need to get your collateral. You need to get, you know, your character. Are you, you know, person that, that you know, knows the operation, your capacity? We didn't have the capacity to run the restaurant, you know, but with Wingstop, they'll train you. So, mm, I, you, okay. you know, McDonald's will put you through McDonald's University. So mm. you don't have to go ahead and know everything. You know, matter of fact, they like you not to right. because they don't want to de- detrain all the bad habits. <laughs> right, you know, right. Uh, you know, that you may have learned from another concept or in your kitchen. Because cooking in your kitchen is a big difference from doing something commercially retailing, right? So, uh, you know, we had to go ahead and get all those things together. But it originally started with the p- passion for the product. We love and even right now, and it kind of even blows my mind after the hundreds of hundreds of wings that I've eaten <laughs> you know, wings, uh, uh, and everything like that, you know, when we still go to our stores, because we're still in the trenches in the stores, right? right? We're an owner operator. Nice. Even though we have those, we still try to touch the stores, you know, at least each week. Okay. You know, and when we get the, 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 the you know, the employees to go ahead and to put us together, you know, hopefully they get the owner's order right. So, <laughs> right. They don't. Right. You know, but that's, that's, that's the litmus that that's the test, right? But when it's done right and those fries are there, golden brown and crispy, and you have your flavors, you know, of your chicken and everything is wrapped and look great. And then you have the side and the ranch is homemade and the blue cheese. And it's like, this is the reason this why, is why. Yeah. I bought the concept all those years. Why? Because this is the best thing going when it's done right hot fresh on time you can't beat it i i, I and, and i'll eat wings from even our competitors even from no names it doesn't matter because i just love wings right right so when ours are done right it's far better than anybody else's untouchable so deanna clint is trying to turn this into a lunchtime podcast and make everybody I hungry that, right? um, I yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so i want to ask you i Outside, in the five C's that you need to have, was there one that was harder than the uh, than the other four for you guys to, to come to the table with, to get under control, so to speak? The capital. The capital. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say the capital. Because, again, what a lot of people, because I know you mentioned um, a $250,000 price on Subway. Right. That's pretty much like the start of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's a franchise because we get calls all the time that says, oh, Miss D, you know, Clint, I'm looking at opening up this franchise and they told me all it is is $75,000. And we're like, no, slow down. That's the franchise fee. You still have to build it. Right. And it's yeah. all on you to do all of that, to build it. So you need to have money, you either need to have it money or you need to have your credit in the position where you can actually get borrow for it, right? Right. Um, On average, most folks ain't sitting around with a half a million dollars. dollars, Right. Just say here, um, open it up. And I wouldn't even advise them to take their whole $500,000 and put into um, any business. That's too much of a risk. Hold on, let's see how it's gonna work, right? I'd rather use other people's money. You know, other people's Listen. property, OPP, other people's money, OPM, yes. right? <laughs> um, and I'd rather keep my 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 account fat. I'd rather, cash is king, right? Credit, credit is queen. So I'd rather keep my cash, get this credit, because then the risk, yeah, I am may have to still pay it off if, if the business closes, but at least I didn't give them all of my money. And right. I've seen that happen with so many people that they were already so far in it. We were like, why you didn't call us first? Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. would have told you don't do that. You know, putting all your retirement up yeah. and everything yeah. like that. And it hasn't had proof of concept. So, you know, one of the things that I am a firm believer on, a lot of people look at it differently, but is leverage. Yeah. I said, I will go ahead and leverage pay interest because I'd rather pay, even on an annual basis, if you pay $5,000, $10,000 of interest, you know, but then you can make a hundred to $200,000 in profit, then that interest don't really look like much and you can write it off anyway. Yes. So 
that's something that people don't understand because yeah. oh, I don't want no debt. My business is this yeah, and all that stuff. Oh, no, you know, nothing. Yeah, we uh, like, <laughs> but at the same time, that's not how you do business. You've got to right. leverage it. And that, you know, I said, like he said, OPM, other people's money, you know, but you just have to make sure that you look at it. Okay. The cost of money. I said, number one, I want to get cheap money. You know, I want the cost of the money that I'm using to be cheap, lower interest, lower fees, whatever that. Okay. And right. then I want to go ahead and look at what that cost is on an annual basis. As I said, you can shorten the time frame to six months or 90 days, but I'm going to look at it. If that cost for me to get this line of credit or for this loan, you know, for a one year, two year period of time is X, $5,000, $10,000 in interest, not the money that you owe or the payment. It's only the interest that you do because the money is the money. Right. You know, so when you look at that, okay, now can I put a multiplier on that, that I'm going to go ahead and make that profit. And, and then you just look at it and that's how you make risk tolerance decisions where you can mm. see, is this prudent or not? Because just taking your money and now it's gone and you don't have any money set aside for those rainy days in which you will have, you will have some rainy you know, right, to, right. to, to, to float. And because now you're just sinking because you literally put everything. You, you, you wipe everything out. Yeah. Right. You wipe your rainy day money out. You, now you don't have money to pay your house note, your rent. You don't have your 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 monies to pay for living, you know. So all those things you need to kind of look at, and those are the things that you need to get a mentor, business coach, somebody to go ahead and guide you just through those little things. Just because you have the money doesn't mean you want to use the money, right? You know, because there's an old old nomer that you know everybody wants to give you money when you have money, and when you need the money, there's nowhere around. <laughs> absolutely, you know, so, so absolutely. <laughs> you know. If you have the money in the bank, if I have $100,000 in the bank, I'm going to use that so somebody can lend me $100,000. And then I'm going to go ahead and use your money to make the money. And then I'll take my money and and, and then have it in case something doesn't go right. Whereas, right. hey, I need right. to go ahead and make that payment or something like that because I didn't generate the money. But, hey, I'm already sitting on the money to go ahead and do that until the business can turn around. And those are just the little things the that, tips that, 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 that that are so important, yes. especially in the early years of your business, because you're probably not going to generate profit the first year or two. So you need to go Take ahead time. and you know see how you can kind of maneuver through the trenches so that way you can last. Right. The only reason why we're successful, I would love to say that we have some great you know you know game plan and secret. I said we outlasted everybody. Mm. We're still around. You know, so that's yeah. the difference. And when you put those concepts on top of each other and you can figure out how to last, more than likely it will hit for you. Mm -hmm. I said Wingstop wasn't the Wingstop that you know now back in 2005. People didn't even know that from Wings and Things or Wing Boo, <laughs> you know, Wing Street. <laughs> I said it just wasn't a, a wasn't household name. name. Right, you know, so right. You have to go ahead and, and survive. You know, once you survive, then you can go ahead and now you can live. But first and foremost, you have to learn how to just survive and to make a living. Yeah. And once you do yeah. that, then you can start, you know, glowing up. Right. <laughs> so much to unpack right there. And it's funny because I tell I got into it was I will say a spirited debate at the barbershop recently. OK, because <laughs> I, 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 I exactly. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and what happened was I told them, I said, people misunderstand why the rich get richer. The rich get richer because they hang around people with like minds and like means. Right. And so when they have an idea similar to what Clint was just saying, when they have an idea, they have someone that they can run that idea past and bang, everybody is able to say, you know what, that works. I know somebody here. Let's get that off the ground versus people that aren't quite there yet financially or 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 don't have their money mindset. Right. They hang around people that are on that borderline, too. And so when you have that idea, there's now people that will show you all the hurdles to the success instead of people that will help you find bridges to it. When you guys first started working on your mindset, what was the what were the books that you were reading to help get you uh, prepared for success? Oh, I love, you know, the old faithfuls. I mean, think and grow rich, cash flow con quadrant, rich dad, poor dad, you know, pushing up people, uh, you know, how to uh, make friends and influence with Dale Carnegie. Yes. All those salespeople that said, I've been an entrepreneur and a salesperson for 30 years. So every in book. In your 20s. Yeah, yeah. in my 20s. Yeah. I started out at 19 years old. You know, so when you look at all the movies that are there, Wall Street, Wolf, Wall Street, Boiler Room. Right. You know, oh, you, talk, you went back for Boiler Room. You know, 
Man. And had me watching it. Then I didn't really follow it. I just thought it was a good movie. Yeah. Now you, I can watch you, it with a different eye set, you, right? You understand the set concepts. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, you know, how the you know, I said, you know, uh, lead people, influence people. What was the one that you most recently had that's um on your nightstand by the bed? What was is it the Roosevelt? Oh, it's the uh, what would the Rockefellers what do? What would the Rockefellers do? Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, which is basically the tell of the story between uh, the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilts. Yeah. Oh wow. You know, how yeah. the the Rockefellers basically have a, 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 a longevity of their uh, riches. Yes. You know that are, can be even be seen in today's times, and unfortunately, the Vanderbilts don't have don't the have same it. path right. of success. Right. You know, uh, on that level, so it kind of shared what they did differently mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. uh throughout you know was it the 1800s 1900s the 20th century <laughs> or whatever you know until now, now. Yeah. yeah and uh, the point of it was they just made a decision the rockefellers that they weren't going to break up uh the money and they give it to each heir and then you just go figure it out and and you can you know? and just live your best life and live your best life <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know they, they had to have a plan they, wow that's yeah. the whole thing of the trust fund babies and the trust funds. The Rockefellers, you know, started that where the Rockefellers said that, no, every dollar, nobody's going to get nothing. You know, it's going to go into a big trust, billion dollars, hundred billion dollars, whatever it is. And then each person as an heir can now petition the trust. So if you want to buy a house or something like that, you don't go to the bank. You, you go, go to, to the, the trust. trust. Wow. If you want to run, run a business, you go to the trust. Yep. Everything. So they self-contained and self-financed everything. Everything. You know, and didn't, if somebody went you know haywire you know because you have you know some people with money they you know get into vices and drugs and right. this and that so if you went haywire no problem you did that but guess what the trust from birth had an insurance policy on you excess a million <laughs> two million ten million dollars <laughs> so, right so they were so betting on you that you did yeah you did bad. if you didn't pay the trust back and you thought no problem no worries they said you you they know had they had insurance that you acted a crazy lifestyle boom and money went right back to the trust for the next heir and it kept on going perpetual. And that's how, uh, you know, the rich get richer. Yeah. And then the people that have money, like lottery winners, and don't understand it and go broke, you know, within a year or two time frame, that's the reason why. They don't understand how money works and they don't make the right decisions. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that I love about success, outside of just the thought process of it, is there's there's nothing else that leaves clues everywhere like success mm-hmm. does. And, and 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 it's it, it always impresses me how some people are able to see it in everything, whether it's a commercial, um, a podcast, a book like people that are attracted to success can see the story anywhere, whether they like the story or not. They can see the principles in it. Um, and then people, again, that are on that tra- track where they are not there just yet only see the entertainment value. That's right? right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. it. I just I, I marvel at that all the time, and I just get so wrapped up in in the thought process behind it. We could do this for hours, guys. So, real, real. You're probably sick of this question, but <laughs> I have to ask it. What has the pandemic done to the food service industry for you guys? We we have actually thrived. Um, you know, sometimes I say that, and I and I cringe to say it because I I never want to say it. You know, from a bragging perspective, sure, it's definitely from a grateful perspective. But um, we have thrived. What that is the one thing that I said. Oh, Clem, that's that's one decision that we're glad we went into that business, right? Yeah. When we did, um, because people still were eating food, and yeah. because Wingstop concept has always been about eighty percent, maybe a little bit more. Um, it was carry out. Right. So we already had the carry out concept anyway. So when we had to close the inside of the restaurant down, people were already accustomed to to carrying Taking out. Taking it to go. We already yeah. had online ordering, you know, to go. We already had online ordering in place. And it's so funny because last November, Wingstop introduced bringing in DoorDash as our delivery partnership. And I'm wow. telling you, I was so against it. I was like, no, people are going to be eating folks' food. We don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because we don't know the pandemic is around the corner, right? Right, so right. Like, I'm like, people don't have complaints. That's the worst thing we could do. I, I'm against it. We're not going to do it till they just press us to and force us to do it based on our contract, right? Sure. And that 
was one of the best things mm. <laughs> that we were, happened to us. We were us. only three months ahead of that because we Wingstop only, only started months. delivering yeah. in November of 2019 and then the pandemic happened in February and March. Because prior yes. to that, everything was to go. Like you order it to go or you order online, you come pick it up and you take it with you. Right. By them bringing on DoorDash, we have now added a delivery system um, to, the, to the franchise, to the chain, and it just it blew up. And wow. I'm talking about uh, we were even thriving and doing as well, if not better, some weeks um, when we were closing early because we even adjusted our hours because the whole city of Kern County, where our store is located, was kind of on this curfew. Yeah. So everything kind of closed at 10. So even with us closing two hours earlier, we still didn't lose any money. Wow. So it was really, it's just been a blessing. Um, we're still thriving. Um, e even with this no fans football season, we're, we're still <laughs> doing well at that. Um, and we just got word today, actually, through an email that Kern County is getting ready to go back into 25% capacity for in, in you know, in-store dining. So that should probably, we probably will even see a, an increase now right, yeah. with that. Um, so we are doing very well. All of our stores are doing very well. Nice. That burger took a little bit of a hit okay. um, because it's still a new concept to to Bakersfield and to some of the other areas. Right. The camp, the one that's on the Arizona State University campus um, was really was closed, but yeah, it was, it's back. It's coming back because the students have come back, back to there. school. So. Right. So everything is coming back around, even on the Fat Burger brand. Um, but Wingstop definitely did not skip a beat and actually increased. I love it. I love it. Congratulations to you guys on 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 all of your success in um, in regards to being ahead of the curve. What is it that you guys foresee in terms of the next steps? If there, first of all, congratulations on being successful in Bakersfield. Like that part. let's that's just that's let's that's if you're not in California. Right. Guys, if you aren't in California, you guys, I mean, Bakersfield is like the middle of Northern California, Southern California. It like for a long time, it was like a gas stop. Right. It was yeah. literally that. And so for you guys to thrive in there, it just um, it just highlights your dedication, your vision, your work ethic, like all the things that we like on this podcast. Um in terms of in terms of being ahead of the learning curve or in uh, ahead of the curve for business, what do you guys foresee or what are you guys preparing for? Um, God willing that the pandemic ends, how will you guys continue to scale? What are you guys planning on in terms of additional franchises or are you looking at different models? Uh, I know you guys have not only the book, but looking at publishing there as well. What's next for you guys? So I think what's next, one of the things that I haven't accomplished yet is owning the building that my business is in. So out of all my concepts, I pay rent. Mm, so okay. being a financial advisor, that bothers me to the nth. <laughs> I can only imagine. So with that, you know, uh, and, and God willing, I would love to go ahead and, and, and put a, a concept, uh, whether it's a Wingstop or Fat Burger. Uh, you know, we haven't looked at any new concepts just yet, uh, but I would love to put a store in a, in a, in a shopping center, commercial piece of property that we that we own. Yes. Uh, and pay rent to myself, you know. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, so, <laughs> there you go. So that's the that's the next thing on the table that hopefully twenty twenty one can can kind of bring about. Uh, we've kind of already you know seen some some spots. Uh, we just haven't executed on anything. Uh, one of the things that we have a uh, uh, a wing stop and a fat burger in the same shopping center side by side in nice. Bakersfield, which is. Uh, one of my my number one, number one wing, uh, stop. wing stop. Yeah. Uh, we do very very well there, uh, and right next door. So whether you want a burger, you know, or or some chicken, you can just jump in the car to go to the burger and to go to the <laughs> chicken. I so love it. we we uh, that building was uh, up for sale right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, but we weren't in position to buy it because we were under development. We were just trying to get it open. Sure, uh, but that really bothered me that we weren't able That's to right. capitalize on that opportunity because the owner had called me first, even before we put it on the market, maybe about six months, so that way we can get our stuff together to do it. Wow. But I had uh, six. Um, uh, uh, projects under construction yeah. in 2019, That's and right. I just couldn't pull off that you right. know to, to purchase it uh and he sold it and we got a new landlord and uh you know the landlord is down here in uh in uh you know socal and okay. it's already come to my office and 
and I uh, wanted to talk about, you know, doing some other stuff. And I was like, man, you took my opportunity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like, I want to talk to you. All <laughs> you can tell me is you're going to sell it to us for the sell, original price. It to us. I love you it. Know, but I mean, we, 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 you know, he found out the other things that we do. So he be, he even wanted to go ahead and to come on board and get some guidance and stuff, in which we did. I mean, it's all love. Sure. You know, we, we couldn't we couldn't execute on the opportunity, but that told me, you know, once again, that, you know, any other opportunities that that comes up or that happens, I want to be in position you know, to play. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's our next, that's our next, you know, uh, game plan. And then on the philanthropy side of us, we're looking at even developing some housing, um, some low income housing. Nice. So we, we are, that's, that's another project that we're looking into. We're actually looking into starting the first project um very soon yeah. hopefully very next soon couple next couple of months so that's that's the that's the give back side of us right because we try to make sure that that we definitely um give back and it's it's a lot of exciting things um we we launched a book during a pandemic right. which is crazy because i'm a total <laughs> social person okay yes. i wanted to have the red carpet and the whole you festival for right us. the step and repeat yeah, you know, absolutely. <laughs> and we had to kind of do it virtually, but it, even that has has gone over um, decently. You yes. know, it, it, um, I receive it, and it's and it's still um, been great, and I'm still getting those notifications that you know, oh, you have a book order. I'm like, okay, so folks still out there read. <laughs> yeah, they still uh, read. <laughs> Everything's not audible just yet. Everything. Just yet, right? Just yet. But um, so it's it's been a good been a good ride it's been a good ride it wasn't always smooth yeah i would never tell anybody that i tell everybody you you better own and operate it see just saying you own something you you, you better know the owner operator side of it that's that's when it counts and i really think that's what helps with the longevity of anything is that how much involvement that you're in in your business you have to be involved that leads um, me it, perfectly. When I hear people that just opened a business. I have a young lady that I'm mentoring right now. Yes. And she's wanting to launch her business. And she said, well, can you get on the call with me and my assistant? And I was like, first of all, slow down. You're not at assistant level yet. You, you, can, you, you can handle all of these tasks. <laughs> you know, it's just some people get ahead of, you know, putting the cart before the horse. Right. So um, we just try to be around to to encourage, to, to motivate, to educate, you know, to mentor. And that's really what the joy is now that we've gotten to this level. I'm like, Clint, we've gotten older, babe. We actually, still, we are the for real auntie and I uncle. still see myself in the grind. <laughs> I, 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 I receive that, but I don't receive it. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still putting in work. And I remember, you know, looking over the shoulder at, you know, my mentors and, right. and, and saying, hey, you know, let's do this. And I'm all zealous and, and everything. But now I've turned into that person and people calling me, uncle, and what are you thinking? And I was like, oh, wow, I still... You know, I'm willing to get on the front line with you, and let's so, go make it happen. Clint, Clint, still, he's still flexing after the shower, and and yeah. and. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and said, it's just you know, I, I I don't know anything else to be right. honest with you, man. Right. And said, that's that's maybe what it is because you know from 19, um, you know, I'll be 50 next year. Uh, so wow. all those years of doing the same thing, all I know, and I tell Dee this, but she doesn't really, you know, really understand the magnitude is I just know the first to the 30th. I don't know what, what, right. what, what year we're in, what <laughs> month we're in. It really, cause, <laughs> cause you know, you, you, you start over from the first and my manager used to tell me you only as good as your last sale. Right. That was, that's old. That's a, that's an old deal. Talk to me about something new. So on the first you reset and you started from zero and you built it up and you kept on going again. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that's how I live my life, you know, with that sense of urgency and passion. So, you know, them saying, Oh, what are you going to do? You know, and this time it's like, huh? Oh, uh, uh, okay. Um, uh, well, I guess that'd be good. And we're still doing it because I'm still in the trenches trying to make sure that, that everything still flows. I right. mean, we have a lot of irons out there and we're spinning plates and, you know, I don't want to disappoint. I mean, we have 150 plus employees wow. that are counting on us to make the right decisions, uh, to not be frivolous, to not be crazy, uh, you know, to have their paycheck on time, yes, you sir. know, on payday. Uh, and, and I don't take that, you know, lightly because, you know, we've had people that we know that have made some bad decisions and mm -hmm. cost, you know, families out there, 
you know, jobs and livelihoods. Right. And I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that guy because we have a lot of people that are looking for us, you know, for their check on Friday. Yes. And if we start doing some dumb stuff, uh, you know, that may not happen. And, and that's just that. That's, that's a heavy weight. That's yeah. yeah heavy and, weight. and I'm not willing to, uh, to to bear that burden, you know, lightly. So, you know, those it. are some of the things that keep me going and keep me motivated uh, to make sure that what we've built up, you know, stays because I, I love that, you know, about five of our, our, our 12 managers have actually purchased homes while being employed with us. Wow. Wow. That's strong. That's strong. It's, it's, you guys have led me into two of my next questions. So I'm going to pick this one. Um, how important or have you, obviously you guys have learned how, but how important is communication when something is business related and it gets heated or emotional in terms of thought processes and then business offers or business hours are up and, and you guys got to go from the master, the, from the office to the master bedroom. How do you turn it off and come back to a, a synergistic place where you guys can focus on yourselves and not just the business? That, you know, and it, it's funny because even We've had some, like Super Bowl, let me just give an example. Super Bowl is like the most intensive day ever in the history of Wingstop, right? right. It's just, the line is out the door, the phones are ringing off the hooks. Some customers are coming in drunk and they're tripping. It, it's just one of those days. Sure. And and Clint does amazing. And I'm usually the social, the people person. And Clint does amazing with handling the customers and keeping them, because I'm going to take it too personal. You know, you just <laughs> something pop off at me too quick. I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be you know what? Okay, hold on. Check this out, bro. Right. So I push him to the front and I get on the line and I'm literally shoulder to shoulder with my staff, you know, getting those orders out and, and keeping them motivated, keeping them encouraged. Thank you. Doing a great job. Let's get this. Let's get this. Yeah. You know, and it's been times when he'll come back and he's like, okay, babe, I need you to get this. I said, you just asked me about that grade. So I'm talking through the teeth now, right? <laughs> but I still got to keep in mind that I do have a whole audience watching, right? right? And I never want anyone to see me disrespecting him. You know what I mean? And then, and I know he gives me that same respect. So even if I say, okay, babe, I need you to really like for a minute, I need you to step back. Don't, don't ask me about that right now. Don't, don't ask me that right now, right? Right. And we even do that in everything, even when we're at home. If it's if it's getting too tough, I can I can look at him. We kind of have those expressions where right. okay, this is where we're going too far. Let's cut off the conversation. Let's step away, mm -hmm. and then let's pick it back up later. You know, but we can I can tell Clint he he knows. I've been wanting to tell him you that's not what you said. You finished that sentence in your head, dear. <laughs> you didn't say that out loud for me to hear. Oh, oh, so this, this is the thing that you say that. So I will make an open confession. Yes. yes. So on on the podcast in life, I said <laughs> I actually did the same thing. I think to one of my staff members here in the office, and I said maybe my wife is actually <laughs> correct <laughs> with you. being is saying that oh because God. I caught myself not finishing the thought and expecting them to deliver whatever it was that I was talking about. And I knew that I had stepped away because another call had came in and I hadn't finished it. But yet I walked back out waiting for it with anticipation. Like, okay, what, what was, you know, what I wanted. And I didn't finish, and I said, "That's what my wife be talking about." Oh and, man! And and you I denied that. I denied that for maybe 10, 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> Openly, last week that came up. I love, we are breaking barriers here. Yeah. <laughs> but, that, but that's how we've been able to communicate. Like we tell each other, you know yeah. what I mean. And even if he didn't get it, like he said, he just didn't see it until now, right? But right. I I would still let him know that, and it's all in the delivery. Um, yes. But that's one thing about it. When we leave there, when when everything is shut down and it's time to shut down, we leave it outside. I just refuse to let the business or the success be the death of our family, be the death of our marriage. I'm not going to stand by and do that. Ever. I love it. You know, so if we got to fight through conversations and hard discussions with each other to make sure that we're still intact and we're still together and we're still okay. While we handle this business, we're going to forever do that. That's why yeah. we take every 90 days, we're taking a trip somewhere. I was I just going to ask about that. Day, we have literally hopped in the train from Union Station in downtown L.A. and went to Santa Barbara for the day. Did nothing but shop, ate, walked up and down the strip, and then got back on the train and came back home because we understand that we have got to still break away and make time for each other. So, okay, I got to I got to 
push back on that. And the only reason I got to do it because you guys, I love the 90 day vacation rule, but you guys have the luxury of the kids being gone. So we we started this baby. We started this this when they was babies. (laughs) You just leave the kids to themselves with some wings. Is that what? Grandparents on both sides. I love it. Aunties, you know, we just one thing about Clint and I when we when we got married, we were fully committed to each other, and 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 it's and it it may have not started off like that, Um, you know. And our book talks about that, you know, that it was a little bit of a rocky start, but the commitment that we each other. Like we're all in. It is what it is. We're, but we all in on this, and we need everybody from both sides of the family to understand this right here. Y'all not coming through this because I saw my aunts um, be be married and 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 then be in charge of the house. I didn't like how that looked. I didn't <laughs> like that the husband kind of took the backdrop. And I may be just old fashioned in that. I'm not sure. saying that a woman can't go out and make money. And and I have a one of my best friends is an MD and her and her husband is a principal. I don't need to tell you the difference in the pay salary. That's obvious, Ooh, right? Yes. But I see her respect him as still being the man and the head of her house. And so that's what we've kind of centered ourselves around is that everybody understanding their role. And we did not tolerate our family coming in to divide anything. I love and it. And I'm telling you, the aunties was like, one wanted to borrow some money from me. And I said, well, let me get with Clint and I'll, you know, let you know. Right. Well, I, I know you have to do all that. You got to ask him. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Right. I You're not messing I, up this I, house I, over $200. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I am going to have a conversation. Yeah. Cause you're not asking for 20. That's easy. Exactly. So, <laughs> that's some, some light bill. You want some light bill help and some rent help. Oh, I'm going to have to talk to him, you know, about that. Right. And uh, Getting them to understand that early on, it blended us very nicely. And even though it was times when I was like, my babies are still too little. No, Clint, I can't do it. I'm just not ready to leave them yet. He still would pull me and say, babe, no, because he understood we still need to connect. We can't just make our lives just all about everybody else are just about our children only yes they are our priority Mm -hmm. but they're going to be okay we left them in good hands now you come on get in this car and let's go to monterey for the weekend right right it's it's, it's 72 hours they're gonna make it they're gonna make it they're gonna make it it. (laughs) we started off doing that there in our early years of our marriage and we just continued it on i love it i love it now clint if if you're anything like me and and you got some longevity in this um, are there trips that are not necessarily high on your list, but you make the best out of them for the sake of keeping the tradition? Or is it is it that you get to you have some say in where y'all go? Uh, well, for the most part, I plan the trips, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. OK, <laughs> yeah. so now you've given me more work because when my wife listens to this, she's yeah. going to say, I plan the trip. Get it, girl. Get it, girl. Oh, I, Lord. I, I, you know, I. I, I love going, you know, places I, you know, my mom took me traveling around the world when I was young. So I had a passion for, for seeing new, new places and experiencing new things, you know, from a young age, you know, D, you know, kind of, uh, you know, had that as well. So we okay. automatically said, no, we've done things on the Econo Lodge budget and we've done right. things on the Ritz, you yeah. know, so we, you know, have done no, things at different levels, you know, looking for uh, a clean nice safe hundred dollar a night place mm-hmm. and then they go gave into, you breakfast they gave you breakfast <laughs> and we just went to the matinee and we kind of you know made the stretch the day out you know for our little getaway yeah and of course we've done things with personal butlers and 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 at the ritz or or with the bungalow over the water i mean we've done everything in between right you know right. so you know, you just have to know. And we look at each other now and we did like, okay, babe, I think it's that time, you know, because we're right. pressing, pressing, pressing. And, right. and maybe we missed that 90 day mark by 120 days. Like, <laughs> we, need to, we need to, we need to do we something because yeah. I'm already starting to feel the tension. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm known for being curt and mm-hmm. just, you know, very short answers because I'm dealing with business at different levels. So yeah. once that starts spilling over to the, to the, to the wifey, like uh i i catch myself like okay i need to <laughs> we need to we need to go somewhere right. and we need to detox and unwind which unfortunately for me my phone my laptop i've never been able to disconnect okay. you know all the way but as long as i'm away and i can get around the golf in and 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 then we're together and we by can do it and by the pool or whatever because i don't mind re- 
respond to an email or a text when I'm by the pool with my feet up and somebody's <laughs> giving me a cocktail. See, I can do that. Right, you right. Know? <laughs> you know, but, you know, that at least it's not in the office, you know, setting. So that's how we, you know, get away and steal away and still, you know, kind of keep the, uh, the, uh, the, what the flame, they say to keep the, the keep, spark. keep the keep sparks the spark going. Lit. Yeah. 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 I'm, yeah. I'm all about the sparks, man. I, I that might be one of my favorite parts of, of being married is, is, is the sparks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you this. It, it, and, and either, either of you can take this one on first, but out of all the accolades, out of all the awards, um, the the living resumes you guys have had employees whose kids now work for you out of all the accolades and the accomplishments that you guys have have racked up what to mean the most to you at the end of the day hmm. okay so i'll tell you about the first one okay i think our first recognition um, for Wingstop at yeah, the yeah. convention. Come out for six years, six or seven years. We didn't years. get the recognition till almost year seven. Wow. And I'm telling you, I, I sat there and I went to every convention and we clapped up everybody. We were supportive and we were excited to be there, right? To right. be in the room. But it was days that I just felt like we're in the grind. Like we're get, we're hitting it hard and we are not, we're missing the mark and, and we're not getting recognized. And there's, you know, other than them saying, hey, D and Clint, that's about all the recognition we get. So I literally, this year, I literally sat with my back to the stage. Like it didn't even matter. Cause I was like, no one, they're not talking about nothing, right? Right. So I got my back to the stage and we're just kind of talking at the dinner table with, with other people, other owners, franchise owners that are there. And I'm talking back. And you probably can feel my energy that I'm one of those ones that can get that mess talking all right. And I'm like, they gonna get to Texas. I'm about tired of Texas coming up here winning everything. I right. mean, I was going in, and then they were like, and the number one store for top sales increase for the year goes to you know Wings I Bakersfield Clay. Well, I was like, well, you'd have thought I won the Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> You would have thought it was the Oscar. I was a waving at folks as I was going to the stage. I mean, it I was love just, it. It was it was like a like somebody sees us and and God sees the work that we're putting because we were in the grind. I'm talking about then we were at the store, we were working hard, we were just you know we cleaning toilets because I had never been above what I asked my employees to do. Right, right. Um, and and you just kind of felt like, is it going to ever be our turn? You know, when is yeah. it going to ever be our turn? And when we got that recognition, I, that I will never, ever forget um, that feeling. I think it's even a picture of us in the book of that first yeah. award. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I think that is it. Mm-hmm. But that one was, was a huge accomplishment as far as us in the business um, because we were amongst peers Pierce, yeah. um, right. that were, were killing it, you know, that had been recognized year after year after year. And and from there, there's been no looking back. We've already hit, you know, um, the two point five million dollar sales club. So we've gotten award after award after award. So now it's become common, but I still get excited. So let me not say <laughs> that I, you know, don't don't get excited to get them right. Yes. Um. So that's one for me. What what's one for you, babe? Um. Uh, well, I mean, just getting to the point where we on the you know we understand and accept our role of actually being people in the community that people Ooh, look up to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. As I said, I don't take that lightly yes. at all. Yeah. So yeah. I think of that as being a, a trophy in itself that we try to live every day to be our best uh, examples of what uh, 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 black a black couple that believes and fears the Lord runs a successful business and have kids that, you know, go through their challenges, but, you know, are great, you know, uh, uh, people of the community themselves. My son has actually, you know, come home from school and and, uh, through the pandemic and everything like that. Uh, is, uh, looking to intern here at the office to see what his dad really does, you know, <laughs> nice. right. you know, so that's happening, which is an exciting new journey, you know, that, that we're embarking on as father and son, because, you know, he's 22 to be 23 years old in a couple months. Mm-hmm. So having that, you know, uh, working relationship of right. you know, father and son, it's almost like Sanford and his son, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, this, is, this is our junkyard, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Just having that dynamic, is 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 fun because i spent a lot of time uh with my daughter on the aau circuit you know going through uh 
you know, all over the country with her, you know, traveling basketball team to high school to college. Now she's, uh, and, she's a senior. And now. she's a senior in college, and they just sent us nice. the, the thing for home, you know, ticket holders. Because I go to every game, whether it's home or away. Every game, I'm, the, I'm the soccer, it. you know, dad, the basketball dad. I you love know, so it. the other girls even look for me. But they said that you know there's no fans in the audience, so I have to stream it and everything. So I'm so mad and disappointed <laughs> about that. You I can hear it. Like you got your phone finger, and it's gonna be on the screen. He's probably gonna go to the school anyway. And just and, be sitting and, outside, and sit in the thing, tell them to stream uh, it like uh, you do with uh, the Staples Center or something. You know, uh, I love but, it. You know that you know, dynamic and relationship that we have with our family and then, uh, you know, our other, you know, uh, extended, you know, kids and stuff like that. To me, I'm living the dream right now. And I want to just continue to make, you know, everybody, you know, as a proud example of what uh, you can be, you know, once again, as said, God fearing Christian couple that doesn't have to sacrifice their dedication their to, and their integrity to the Lord and still be yeah. successful here in this world. How important has faith been for you guys in, in, in when you guys are launching? And even I know sustainability is one level, but during the launch part, the belief like in, in terms of I don't want to say imposter syndrome, that's been a buzzword lately for a lot of the, the, the guests that I've had, because everyone feels like when they're launching, like you have to be as good as the people that are already, you know, cruising. Right. But in terms of faith both for your marriage and for your business, what are the things that you guys do to strengthen that part of yourselves um, so that it can, you know, stream into your business and, and how effective you are there? I mean, we're not above. I mean, we've gone to marriage uh, retreats. So part of that, that 90 yeah. days and stuff like that is, yes. is, is, is marriage, how to communicate, you know, uh, you know, what is your love languages? Cause I said, I'm business entrepreneur, uh, you know, uh, corporate, you know, America numbers, analytical. So, you know, I might just say this is the X and the O and deal with it, you know, <laughs> so that don't work too well, you know, for the most right, part. So right. you need to go ahead and learn how to kind of communicate, you know, take your time to explain, you know, the things because I'm, I'm I hate being redundant and, and explaining something because I look at every minute. Uh, of the day in, in, in my itinerary that I got so much on my plate of actually precious time, yeah. you know? Uh, so I don't like to go back, but then I had to learn and understand that, okay, I need to take my time and let's go with breakfast. So that way we could yes. talk about, you know, that I was too short to talk about last night or didn't yeah. want to talk about because when I'm through the day and you was like, Oh, how was your day? And was it, I don't want to talk about my day or anything else, <laughs> whether it was good or not. Cause I'm on the phone all day. I'm answering emails. I'm oh dealing with God. questions yes. and everything like that. So when I come home, I just want to unwind and I think about that. Let's talk about the kids or how you're doing, or let's talk about the next trip or something, but I don't want to talk about no more business. My right. mind is shut right. But you we know? have, but we have fully committed to, um, like I said, we we have a, a, a marriage mentor, uh, okay. Bishop Rodney, that that we've sat down with and said, hey, we just want to check in. Yeah, you know, nice. we feel like we're doing good, but we want to talk to you and just check in. You know, give us some feedback. Um, like Clint says, we've attended um, marriage counsel, you know, counseling marriage retreats. We've done it all because we understand that you can't just give your all to everything and everybody else and not tap into each other. Yeah. Um, and it's faith over everything. Like I, I and, and when and one thing about Clint and I, whenever I felt like I was at my weakest point in faith, Clint has always been the one to say, "Babe, God carried us through this. Mm. He carried us back then. Let's remember. Let's go on the journey backwards. Let's look back. Right? Didn't He take care of us then? Okay. So I need you to just keep thinking. It's that same God. We're tapping into the same God. He didn't change. Our situation changed, right. but He didn't change. And just constantly building each other up on that and, and sharing about things that we've overcome. And, you know, I, I tell, I told him, I think, was it just maybe even a month ago, like, babe, did you ever think like, this is, this is our life. Like right. it's still, I, I'm glad that I still get in awe of that. Right. Yes. Because I think if I ever get complacent in my lifestyle and the things that, and the, the, the thing, the luxuries that we've been afforded. If I start to get arrogant in that, or, or cocky in that, or thinking that that's just what it's supposed to be, right? Right. Because I'm something extra special. <laughs> no, it's hard work. It's commitment. It's it's having love for others, um, being respectful of others, and God does see me as special. Yes. But He sees a whole lot of us as special. We just have to tap in. 
you know, tap in to him and see what it is that he wants our journey and how he wants our journey to look like. And we constantly remind each other that, you know, we'll sit right now, church is streaming on live. We'll order breakfast, yeah. go sit on our patio, open up the laptop and look at live streaming church. You I know, it. that's that's that faith that's building up the faith because sometimes you get so comfortable in, in all of the things that yes. you have that you got to slow down and say, wait a minute, I wouldn't have any of this if it wasn't for Without the grace God. of God, Without you know? God. Um, and, and we take our time to, to connect with each other um, and, and just keep building each other up on that. You know, I remind him that he's still my, you know, my vente caramel macchiato. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. See the whole voice change when she started saying that. There's a little more twang to it and everything. Look, see, Clint, Clint, you part of that that good six foot club. So, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I love it. Everybody in my everybody in my household is over six feet except Except me, except my wife. So we, you know, me and my kids, we have a running joke and say this is just just a six foot club over here. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I wish I was, I wish I had that same dynamic. But here's what I know. Here's what I know. It makes it easy to identify who has the most power in that house. (laughs) <laughs> uh, the shortest one in the household runs it all absolutely yes my dad is a is a retired navy seal six two my mom is four eleven and when i tell you she run that house like any drill sergeant he's ever had that sounds go. like my like my parents yep. and my grandparents yeah, yeah my grandmother is four, on, uh, four actually, eleven, and tall. my grandfather was about six two six three yeah, yeah. i yeah. love it last question for you guys um okay. we i've been blessed we've been able to grow this thing we're international something like 30 countries we got wow. a little over half the states um and and again we are for people that are shortening the learning curve aspirational people that are um hell bent on success and just don't know where to turn so each one of our guests um you know the 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 functionalities the 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 business entrepreneur Uh, activities that they're in are all different, but there's always something that they can leave. And for you guys, what I want to ask you is for the couple out there that um, has these dreams, that's on track, that are working on their credit, they're working on their five C's, but they're noticing that they're losing their friends in the process. Mm -hmm. What is it that you tell that couple um, in regards to losing their, their circle while they're chasing success? You got to be that they I think we said at the very beginning of the conversation with you is about linking up with like minded individuals. Yes, they have got to have a circle that that thinks like them, that has some ambition about something and that wants something. We've had some fall off along the way. We, we've been accused of thinking we better and and oh, they change now. And we've had all of those things, darts being thrown at us, right? Sure. But we also understand you have to be confident in who you are and know what it is that you want to do. And you can't let anyone, any of the naysayers stop you. And if you don't link up with people, that's why it's good to have mentors that's in the business. I don't know if you want to open up a um, sewing machine shop. Find right. someone that has opened a sewing machine shop, link up with them and let them mentor you and kind of give you some tips on it. So the business world, it, the business is business, right? Numbers right. is numbers. It's just it's just identifying what type of business you're in. And anybody that does not, you should even have a strong circle of married couples. Yeah. that are in, around your circle. If you roll in with the couples and y'all the only ones happy, that ain't going to be too good. <laughs> you know, yeah, we can't have the, the the argument, you know, we're the only one happy. So now we're kind of holding back and not showing so much love and affection to each other because we don't want to offend them because they mad and right. miserable, you right. know? So you have to disconnect yourself from, from that circle. And, and it's hard. And it's one of those things that you you feel like you're losing family members. But if it's yes. anybody that's really that's rocking with you and that's riding with you, they're going to be right there. The best testament is the living example. So once you are able to go ahead and get in to transcend your individual, you know, place and yes. time, because they tell me all the time, where you are is exactly where you're supposed to be, mm. you know? So by the decisions that you made or whatever, but if you want to get to the next level, 
then you have to go ahead and surround yourself with those people. It's the same thing. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're probably in the wrong room. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. so you have to go ahead and keep challenging yourself. And those people that are, are in your immediate circle, trust me, I said, they not going anywhere. You're going somewhere, but you can show them the path to get to where they really want to be because they're jealous and they're fighting about where they want to be. But right. maybe they just want to go ahead and hold you back so that way you don't get there before them. But no, you got to <laughs> break away. Don't forget about them. Right. Show them this is the example, and they can get there too if they want to put in the work mm-hmm. and change their mindset the same way. If they don't, there's an old thing. If you can't change the people around you, change the, the people, people around you. <laughs> I love it. I love some it. Some people want you to say mediocre because they don't. You if you stand out and shine bright, now you're shining the light on their mediocrity. They want to stay there. They want to be yes. like that. So wow. of course they don't want you to evolve because then now they look. They have to look at it and examine themselves. And I'm like, that's a good examination to take. So take it and do something about it you know yeah. we we we've, we've taken trips to where we've had to have those those meetings with with the brotherhood and the sisterhood and like listen we going on this trip mm-hmm. last trip we went on i get it that was the budget then we get we're doing differently everybody yeah. is welcome but not everybody always goes you know what i mean I love um it. and we just had to say you you have to keep setting a standard you you have to keep setting a standard and keep um thriving and wanting to do better and everybody that's with you should want to do better and should be pushing each other up you know yes yeah i think it 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 works better obviously when you have a bigger circle but sometimes the circle needs to be small mm-hmm. um for, i always tell people i have a circle within a circle within a circle within a circle <laughs> i love it i love it I, I, I literally it. have this is the circle and then it's another circle inside that circle and then and then there's that core right. you know what i mean right. um and i just think it's you you can have big small growing i have circles that are not even connected to other circles you know yes um but i just know which which each circle what role it plays in my life and i know how to categorize them and and keep them like that wow. and that's how i've been able to maneuver and move around um, without having to really just face a whole lot of adversity and, and, and heartache um, about people that really wasn't for me anyway. Yeah, I, I, I could ask you guys just three million more questions. I will do. <laughs> <laughs> I could do. Well, we could talk to you for three million minutes. <laughs> I love it. We, we're going to have to have you guys back on. Last question as we wrap up, because I know you guys got to get going and, and, and I don't want to have, you know, you guys on for, for, for three hours. But what does the term generational wealth mean for you um at this point in your career uh well i mean that's the name of your business yeah yeah it is the name of the business i did my research i did my research you know (laughs) so uh well it's actually coming to fruition with my son because you know both my kids we didn't want to force them into it they understand that both of them worked in the business Okay. You know, at an early age, because I mean, they're 22 and 23 years old. So we've had the business for 15 years. So they grew up in the business, right? Right. You know, so they've washed dishes to cut potatoes, wipe tables down, sweat mm-hmm. floors, cashiered, mm-hmm. cooked. I mean, they've done it all. But they've really, you know, wanted to go to school, go to college, and they've never really shown interest that, you know, they wanted to, you know, take it over and, and, right. and, 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 and keep it going, right? Right. But my son has come home and he's reevaluated some things in his life and it's like okay well you know there's more than you know just you know shaking baskets and flipping burgers i said no we're talking about running empire you need to know that but that's what they that's all they saw they didn't understand that the administrative the executive side of the business so Mm -hmm. now he's in the office you know it's only been two weeks so you know but some of the conversations and some of the things that he's been able to witness because i've let him in on meetings with clients and over her phone calls even taking them in the field and things so now he's seen things in a different light and he's like wow okay i can do this and he started talking about other things like okay now that i'm in my career you know i can start doing i said yes son that's what we're talking about this is what i wanted you to see all along you just couldn't see you know the the trees you know past the forest so um just that in itself the way you can have a second a third generation you know that you're passing on wealth and not debt 
you wow. know, and, and the, the wealth can be in, in concepts and knowledge. It doesn't always have to be, you know, monetized. But if you can leave those principles and they can expound on them, sometimes the generation, the second generation is able to take it to the level that the first generation never could see. Right. You know, it's just different, different technologies and stuff. And you know, my kids, I'm sure like all the other kids can work social media and, and technology better than we can. So yeah. that's a platform that is something that we haven't really tapped into. If it wasn't for Wingstop having his own, you know, uh, uh, you know, audience of, 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 of apps and things like that, right. we still would be kind of lost because like, <laughs> other companies, you know, barely have a website, yeah. you know? So yeah. it's just one of those things that you got to go ahead and keep evolving and going. And sometimes that second person, if they tap in, could come because he has you know all kind of ideas you know i have to slow him down on but sure. some of the things that he, <laughs> he he thinks probably could work you right. know with uh experience and that to me is the generation that you're leaving something and 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 the best thing is you're leaving them you know as said uh wealth instead of you know obligation and liabilities yeah and that's we we actually have um a financial freedom friday live that we do on Facebook every Friday, and we talk about leaving your family something other than grandma's recipe and debt, yeah. right? Um, and and I and I love my grandmother's rest her soul German chocolate cake. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> yes. But we gotta stop leaving just that good recipes and then debt, and we wow. can't ever get above that. So Clint and I, it's just always been our mission that our children go so much bigger and further than we ever could imagine, right? We look at the joy that our parents see when they see us and see what we're doing. Clint's parent, his dad just turned 90, his mom is 80, and, and my parents are 72 and 75. Um, so we just, it's a joy in that too, that we're here to, to show our parents what we've done. And then we've also set the stage for our children. We told them at the gate, you, if we didn't buy Wingstop for you guys to take over one day. If right. you take over Wingstop, that would be amazing, right? We would love to be able to, to leave it to you guys, but we want them to still find their own way. Prayerfully, they will find their way back to the family business. Right? This <laughs> yes. is very lucrative for them. Right. Um, but we also understood that we still wanted them to be introduced to other things. We wanted them to be introduced to travel. We want that's part of generation generational wealth for me. Yeah. Travel experiences, yeah. right? Um, seeing what others do, philanthropy, all that is part of what I want to give to, to my children. And then, then should the Lord bless us to be grandparents that our grandchildren can see, Oh, this is what they did to set us up. You yeah. know, we always tell our kids, don't be afraid to ask us for things that why are y'all scared to call and ask about some gas? Are you serious? You know, <laughs> but we taught them the responsibility and the respect of having money. Right. right? So they're like, well, mom, I don't just want to be bugging you, you know, about some gas. But I went out, you know, to eat with my friends. So I was a little short. I said, girl, you better not ever be on the side of the road needing to borrow oh money for no gas. Yeah, I, it's funny. So I told my daughter, day. my, my yeah. daughter's in college now at TSU. And, and one of the funniest okay. things happened. She, uh, Apple Music, you know how they, they bill you every <laughs> month? Her <laughs> Apple Music hit. And she's like, dad, I'm overdrawn. I said, you was broke before they took their little $10. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> like we should have had this conversation last week. What's going on? And so now every time she gets billed for her Apple Music, she laughs and she's like, "Dad, it, it hit, and I'm fine." And so yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's, that's the thing. And that's the thing. And we and we re you know, and that's the beauty of it is yeah. that we did teach them that responsibility that they know that yeah they can look and see what their parents or what the family has, but they don't take advantage of it or right. they don't disrespect it. You know. Yeah. Um. So that that's a, that's a good thing. So that's. That's, that's what I, I want to yeah, leave for. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And we just want to tell anybody, you know, our story and hopefully it'll bless them because uh, it's blessing us. You know, they said the Lord is blessing me <laughs> right now. Right now. <laughs> hey, that's so, my song. So we we yeah. want to go ahead and make sure that we pass those blessings on and we don't want to go ahead and just, you know, as I said, die with the nuggets. You know, we're going to we're going to tell it. Tell it, you know, to everybody. So we yeah. appreciate you. Yeah, uh, thank us you tell for our the story. invitation. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, as I said, once again, these are uh, uh, platforms that 
we didn't really even know what to do before April. So. Right. <laughs> That's <laughs> so funny. Yeah, no. all of so well, I was going to say, you guys are rocking with one of the best in the business. Erica Diaz is yeah. phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we love her so much, you know. So she's she's uh, put us and pointed us in the right direction because we wouldn't know. And yeah. and and I don't want to just be you know telling our story to a party of one. Right. You know, we want to try to get it out there because you know we're we're living it. We lived it, and uh, I think that you know if somebody you know takes our examples you know to heart, that they'll they'll be benefited by it. Definitely agree. You guys are the 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 definition of of vision power. Uh, work work ethic and belief and and let everybody know where they can find you online yeah faith family franchise on uh facebook instagram ig www faith family franchise you know on the world wide web dot and com. Uh, dot com yeah you know so uh they can get their books yeah you know so we try to <laughs> nice. keep it we try to keep it simple you know as I said just the three f's faith family, you know family franchise, franchise. I love it. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to the Hawk Vision podcast. Uh, two of the most successful at marriage, successful at business uh, people that I've ever come across. Absolutely love their story. Deanna and Clint Lewis. Make sure you share this one with uh, other visionaries just like yourself. Like, like, share and subscribe as always. And we thank you for tuning in. Thank, thank you, you thank so you, much. This is awesome. Absolutely. Representing East Oakland, man.